Hello and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe Jewell and today I'm going to be doing something that I may look back on and laugh at, but let's do it anyway. So I'm going to be predicting my Torture Poets Department song ranking before ever listening to the Torture Poets Department. That's right, I am going to guess my ranking solely based off of what we know so far, which are the song titles. That's it. <laughs> I am going to be guessing how I think I will be ranking these songs once we have all heard the album. As I mentioned, there's not a lot we know about the album. We've gotten no hints. No songs have been released. We have no idea. But I do feel like you can sometimes gauge whether or not you're going to like a song based on what the song is called the name. Also, there is some stuff that we can kind of assume, like subject matter, based on the title. And so I'm also taking that into account when it comes to my ranking. Now, this may not seem that fun right now because none of us know what the album's going to be like and none of us have heard the music, but I'm going to make this ranking. And then when the album comes out in a few weeks, we will revisit this ranking and see whether I was right on point, super off, somewhere in between. I mean, there's a very good chance that the song I have at number one that I think is going to be my favorite song will end up being my least favorite song. <laughs> we just don't know. And vice, vice versa. I mean, the song I have at 16 could be my least favorite. We don't know. But that's what makes this fun. So I'm going to run through my list. Just as a clarification, I'm only going to be ranking the songs on the official track listing. Um, so none of the bonus tracks, none of the additional songs on the different vinyls and whatnot. I'm just doing like the 16 official tracks, okay? So we're gonna go from 16 down to one. And again, once the album comes out, we will revisit this exercise and I'll then share my true official ranking and we'll see how it compares, okay? Starting off with 16, the song that I think is going to be, be my least favorite song on the Torture Poets Department, and that is The Alchemy. I don't really know why I have it at 16. Truthfully, it was a gut feeling. When I looked at the track listing, I saw The Alchemy and I thought, I think this might be my least favorite song. The reason is because I feel like this is going to be a slow song, which is Fine, like I do like a lot of Taylor's more ballad, slower songs, but for some reason, just the name, The Alchemy, makes me think it's going to be, it gives me Evermore vibes. I think that this is what it is. It gives me Evermore vibes. And Evermore wasn't my favorite album. I liked it and there's some songs on the album that I loved, but for the most part, it wasn't my favorite. And so I think because of that, I have it at 16. Number 15, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? I have that, that song at 15 simply because I am nervous about the title. <laughs> I don't know how she's going to work that title into the song. And again, it seems like a title of a song that would be a little more slow, a little more introspective, not like a big pop record, which again is fine, I'm just a little bit more, I have I have some more questions about it. Um, and I'm also curious what the subject matter of the song is. Like I can't, I can't kind of quite figure that out based off of the title. So again, 15. 14, I can do it with a broken heart. I think this is gonna be a ballad. I guess you're sensing a theme here. I'm putting all the songs that I think are gonna be slow at the back half. That's actually not true. Um, but I do feel like this song is gonna be a bit of a slower song. Um, I don't know. I think I'm also a, a little bit afraid of songs that have really long titles. <laughs> like sometimes those work and sometimes they don't work. Um, and so I just think when you have a longer title, I have a lot more questions and I'm just a little bit more unsure about whether or not it's gonna work for me. So for that reason, 14. Okay. At 13, I have Clara Bow. Now this one I'm conflicted on for a lot of reasons because Clara Bow is the final song on the official track listing, okay? Now, when it comes to Taylor's final songs on her albums, I tend to be very mixed. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I don't. 
For example, I love Clean. I love Daylight. There's some songs that I think are really great, but other times, not as big of a fan don't love them quite as much. I think she can she 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 sticks the landing like half of the time, at least from my perspective, and the other half like it's fine, but it's not exactly what I would choose as the closing song or it doesn't really it doesn't hit emotionally like maybe it was supposed to. And so for Clara Bow, I I'm just not sure. And so I guess I'm having I put it at 13 because because I know that in the past I've been kind of 50-50 on the final song. And so I, and also Claire Bow, obviously it's a name of a real person. So is this going to be just like a song about this, this person and not about Taylor? Well, we, we, we have to wait and see, but I'm a little bit like, this could be great, but I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm not sold on it yet. So for that reason, 13. Number 12, guilty as sin, question mark. I, I'm very curious about the title, but I can't gain a lot from it. Like, I, I I, have no idea what this is going to be about. I can't even really figure out, like, is this going to be a diss track? Is this a more emotional song? Like, I don't know. So for that reason, 12. 11, I have LOML, Love of My Life. Now, I have that... El- 11 solely because I'm questioning the use of the acronym. I feel like this could be hit or miss. I either am going to really love this song or I'm going to be like, why? What? What? I, I still don't quite understand why she did the acronym. I, I'm, that's what I'm most curious about because I, I doubt she's going to actually be singing LOML in the song, right? So there has to be a reason for the acronym. We will find out, I'm sure, but I'm sort of like... I don't know how this one's going to go down. So 11. Okay. Number 10, I have the title track, The Tortured Poets Department. Okay. Now, again, much like the final song on the album, when she has a song on the album that is also the same name as the album, I'm kind of 50-50 on it. There's times when I've loved it. For example, I'm a huge fan of the song Fearless from the album Fearless. Speak Now is... It's good. I love the song Red. I think that's a great song. I'm not as big of a fan of Lover. I don't love Evermore. I think it's fine, but it's not great. So I'm a little bit hot and cold when it comes to the titular song. Um, I also am a little, like she clearly, there's, there's a reason why she picked this song or this title to be the title of the album, right? We know the like what people think the the reason why she picked this title was because maybe of Joe Alwyn having a group chat kind of close to the same name. Okay. I'm just, I'm a little bit worried it might be cheesy, the song itself. I don't know. And also it's a pretty wordy title. And so again, it goes back to my former theory, which is like, I'm I don't love long titles of songs. So I don't know. I might come back to regret this because there's a chance this could be my favorite song, but for now, it's at 10. Number nine, Fortnite featuring Post Malone. Now, I have a confession to make. I am not somebody who has ever really loved any of Taylor's collaborations on her songs. There's some that I like and I think that are good, but for the most part, I'm not really a fan. Um, and they're not often songs that I go back to. I, I prefer Taylor when she's just by herself and when she's just Taylor. Now, I like Post Malone and I do tend to like the first songs of albums that she puts out. Like I, I tend to be a fan of, of, of the first tracks. So for that reason, I have it right in the middle sort of at nine because I think I will like it, but I don't think it's going to be one of my favorites. So nine feels safe. Number eight, I'm going to do eight and seven kind of in conjunction because I feel similarly about both. Eight, I have My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. And seven, I have The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. Both of these song titles are long, which goes against my, you know, typical um, theories, I suppose, of liking shorter titles. But these both are going to be, I think, dis dis songs, dis tracks. I think sh- these are going to be coming from the jugular. My boy only breaks his favorite toys and the smallest man who ever lived. Like she's, she's coming for somebody with these songs. And there's nothing I love more than when Taylor Swift is coming for somebody and has like some things to say about something. So again, long titles, kind of scared about that, but I think the subject matter of each of these songs, I'm going to love. So eight and seven. Number six, Florida. 
three exclamation points featuring Florence and the Machine. I mentioned before, I don't love features, but I'm very, very curious about this song. One, I love, I love Florence and the Machine. She's fantastic and an amazing voice. So that, that, that definitely gets me in, intrigued. We know that Taylor, following her breakup from Joe Alwyn, the first place that she performed following the announcement was in Florida. So I am also basing, I'm putting it at six because I think it's going to be a pretty like intense emotional song. And I'm just really curious about it. Like I, I think this has a lot of potential. So for that reason, six. Number five, but Daddy, I Love Him, which is a nod to the Little Mermaid. Ariel says this, I believe, to King Triton, which is interesting. It's a title we've never, I, I don't, I can't think of another Taylor Swift song title that's like this title. I, I'm like so, from basically six downward, every title like really intrigues me and is very like, I'm just so curious. Um, And so I'm just, I think I have it at five because I'm really looking forward to pressing play on that song. Like, I'm just very curious to hear what it sounds like, what the subject matter is, all the things. Number four, I can fix him, parentheses, no really, I can. I think this song is going to be a bop. I may come back to regret saying that. It may be a ballad, but I think it's going to be a bop. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be upbeat. I think it's going to be like a, I don't know if Song of the Summer is the right the right call, but I think this is going to be a really fun song that fans love. Okay, now we've made it to the top three. These are the songs, the top three songs that I think I will love the most from the Torture Poets department. Starting off with number three, So Long London. This is the track five song. I tend to really like the track five songs. In fact, I mean, All Too Well is a track five song, my favorite Taylor Swift song of all time. I think Taylor's best track fives are when she is, and I don't like that she feels this way, but it's the truth. I think her best track fives are when she is really heartbroken. All Too Well, Dear John, and I think So Long London is going to fit into that kind of category. It is going to be, I would not be shocked if this was like a sister song to All Too Well. I could see this being five minutes long, full of emotion, heartbreak. I have such high expectations for this song, which might come back to bite me, but I think it is going to be elite. And I think it's going to be one of her best track fives ever. So I'm keeping it a little bit safe by putting it at three because I could be way off base. It may not be that good, but I'm thinking it's going to be good. Okay, track two or the song I have as my second favorite song, what I think is going to be my second favorite song, Down Bad. Now, the reason I have it at two is I like the title, short, sweet, fun. I also feel like, and I've said this before, I think this might be the Travis Kelsey song. Like, I feel like in other albums, if the subject matter is about like one person or one story or one like relationship, she always kind of has like one or two songs that is about like something different or like about the current thing that she's in, like a a kind of a nod to like the future of some sorts. And I feel like this may be that for this album. Um, and I think it's going to be kind of a sultry R&B, just like, I think it's going to be a great song. I have high hopes for it. So number two. Okay. The song that I think is going to be my favorite from the Torture Poets Department is Fresh Out the Slammer. I think this is going to be the song of the summer. I think this is going to be the cruel summer of Torture Poets Department. This is going to be the song that everyone loves, all the fans love. This is going to be a roll your windows down, put it on t full volume, scream out at the top of your lungs. Like this is going to be a bop, bop to the top. And I think I'm going to love it. Watch me be entirely wrong, but that's my prediction. Fresh Out the Slammer is going to be my favorite song off of this album. We'll have to wait and see. I would love to know in the comments which songs you think you're going to love and which songs you think you're not going to like just based off of the song titles. Please let me know what you think of my ranking. I cannot wait in just a few short weeks to come back and revisit this and do my actual official ranking and compare and contrast and see where I got things right, things wrong, all of the above. As always, please subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on, on everything Taylor Swift. We're going to be doing so much content leading into the album release and after the album. So like, you're not going to want to miss a single thing. Follow us on social media and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.